Howdy, howdy, everybody. What's it going on? Good to be back with you on another episode of the Pentacast Podcast. Ryan, how are you doing, man? Oh, just splendid. How about you, pal? I'm doing good. Doing good. Ready to drink some coffee. Oh, yeah. Hang out with you, talk with you. Uh huh. And uh, we have no guest today, so it's just me and you in the studio. We have no friends. Nope. So it's just me and you pulling the weight as we do always. Our coffee. Absolutely. You pull those coffee mugs up high. I'm doing the retro t- tonight. Mm-hmm. And you do. Oh, are you? Yeah, you do the new one. Yeah. New one. New and improved. <sighs> the artist who made these cup of coffees, or <laughs> the, <how> about, <laughs> the the artist that made these coffee mugs is before you today, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Pentacast Podcast, and uh, we want to start off by saying thank you to Crosslight Ministries for all the wonderful episodes a few weeks ago. If you have not uh, went back and watched or listened to any of those, we strongly encourage that you do that. If you have a loved one that you feel like is too far gone, just go back and listen to one of those episodes. I shared a little part of my testimony. Um, I did one of those while I was out there. Uh, Brother Lindell and Sister Cindy put me up to it. And a lot of people said, man, we didn't even know that about your testimony. Well... When you open up the lives of somebody, uh, they kind of bear all. And you realize, hey, you know what? There's a lot of people around that have had harder struggles yeah. than me. Yeah. And then some of those testimonies that I recorded and I was a part of, I'm yeah. like, man, I did nothing compared to these people. It was, all of them were incredible. Absolutely. I thought yours was, even though I knew the testimony for at least the highlights, just seeing you with them, mm-hmm. you know, knowing that it, the trio Live through it together. Yeah, and, that's right. And hearing their perspective, you know, how difficult hindsight. it was. And and they didn't know the end result then. No, you know. no, it, yeah, it was, it was beautiful. Yeah, and even I think Brother Lindell mentioned in the episode, he's like, "You, well, he, I think he may have told me after we uh, were done recording." He goes, "You told me some things in in that mm-hmm. episode that I didn't even know." Yeah. And so I don't know. I just felt like I could open up and kind of just bear all. Yeah. And there's of course things that that I didn't mention that that have happened. And uh, what I like about a testimony is that it's not just one part of your life, but your testimony is your life. So yeah. my book's being written every day. Every day. And uh, so every month, God's working on me. Yep. And uh, I have not cli- climaxed, as everyone yep. knows. <laughs> I've not yep. climaxed. I'm nope. still climbing. Still climbing. And, still living. Uh, still learning. Still yep. learning. I Absolutely. talked uh, this past weekend, I talked to a 78-year-old man who I have great respect for. He's one of the godliest men that I know. And you know what he told me? What's that? He goes, I'm learning lessons every day. This is what he told me. That's and I'm beautiful. like, oh. I'm like, thank God. So there's hope for me, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think once your foundation is sure enough, you can have faith in yourself that you're going to make the right decision with the Lord's help. Yeah. So those lessons that you learn every day can be can almost be enjoyable. Yeah, in they a way. can. And you know what? And you learn with God's people. Yeah. God's people are the best people. And we learned that last week with Heather Cooney, uh, the surprise, uh, the announcement. And uh, thank you so much for everybody that participated in that fundraiser that we did. It was phenomenal. We raised yes, 8500 bucks, Amazing. And uh, it's it's all went to her. And so I'm so thankful for that as well. If, if, if it wasn't for everybody that pitched in, and, and made that possible, every one of you patrons. And I think Ryan yep. has an announcement. Blake Bryant is our most recent contributor. So thank you, Blake. Thank you, thank you very much. And uh, I've, I've seen he's uh, enjoyed the podcast. He's been liking some of the stuff. So he, yep. he became a patron a couple weeks ago. So we, we do thank you. And also all the patrons, everybody. Sure. And we mean that. We don't, we're not just saying that and giving you lip service. We really mean that. We appreciate it. Obviously, you can tell we're not rich and famous yet. Uh, getting there, though. We are the getting famous there. part. Absolutely. And so what we're doing is we're giving right back to uh, people uh, in need, and we're taking their stories uh, while we do it. Yep. So yep. getting into the episode today, I went to Cherokee, North Carolina. Yeah, on a vacation. Some people have to work. Yeah. Well, Some I people mean, can go loafing, as the country folks say. Well, some stay home and make money. Well, I don't know. I'd have probably been better off on vacation. Well, Cherokee, they I learned a little fact. You're a history buff, so mm-hmm. you'll 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 appreciate this. Mm-hmm. So when you go to Cherokee, North Carolina, I thought all 
people are going to laugh, okay, especially you that live in Oklahoma. I thought, oh, yeah, all the Indians, they're from Oklahoma. No, they're from Oklahoma because that's where we put them. Yeah, um, that's terrible. The, yeah, it is. It's horrible. We're going to get into that a little bit. And uh, so the Cherokee Indian was from the Smoky Mountains, right right up there. That's where they were from. When you go into Cherokee, North Carolina, it says you're entering, entering into the Cherokee Indian Reservation. Mm-hmm. And so one of the Indians told me, they're like, this is not a reservation. Mm-hmm. The only reason why you see that sign is so you know where you're at. Mm-hmm. But this is not a reservation. Yeah. And so I thought that was neat. They are very, very proud of their culture. Yes. There is a live play. There, there's so many things you can go and do. Learn uh, their dances, which I learned a few. will not share with you. Um, but will be uh, in a separate video. <laughs> <laughs> for a lot of money. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, there's a... There's a ton of stuff to do in Cherokee. I, I encourage I've everybody. I've gone through there. I've never stopped. I, me too. We always stop, get fuel, and yeah, go on yeah, to Gatlinburg exactly. or Pigeon Forge. Yeah. But um, we went with some friends. We stayed at a campsite. It was awesome. It was a great experience. And uh, our friend Kyle, mm-hmm. he has been hyping me up about this live play called Unto These Hills. Yeah. Maybe some of you that have went and, and watched the play, have you ever seen it? No. I, I hadn't either. Incredible. Phenomenal. Um, it shows us how terrible we were yeah. as Americans. Mm-hmm. And Strong work. It really is. We did the museum. We did everything. But that play is really what stuck out to me. Um, we did them dirty. Yes, we did. We did those Indians dirty. The Cherokee Indian helped us win the American Revolution. Yeah. Did you know that? Yeah. I didn't. I didn't know that. I learned a lot on this trip. Mm-hmm. I learned a lot. And so I, I thought it was educational. And believe it or not, I was thinking about what we could talk about. And for whatever reason, I guess I've had so much Native American history mm-hmm. pounded into my head. I was like, man, I've got to tie this in somehow to an Indian or mm-hmm. whatever. Hey, I heard you got a, an Indian name while you were up there. Well, yeah, it was because uh, I ate a lot while I was gone. It was Chief Big Tail. Oh. But when I got home and looked at my bank account, it was... Um, <laughs> chief broke man, <laughs> Indian broke man. Yeah. Um, but dude, we had a great time. We really did. The scripture that I thought about, we could talk about, and the topic was found in First Timothy one and fifteen. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all exception that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. That was the Apostle Paul, and uh, you know. The title of today's episode is Who's the Chief Around Here? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I did go learn about the Cherokee Indians, but Paul's not talking about an Indian chief here. Mm-hmm. He's talking about the one that w- held the highest... Um, failure rate. Yeah, the <laughs> highest failure rate. That's a great way to put it. And um, that scripture has been going over and over in my mind. Um, if you're not um, a stranger to the podcast, you will know that you and I, Ryan... We, we've never claimed perfection. No. Uh, some people don't like that about mm-hmm. us. However, I would rather you not like me and me just tell you the truth. Um, we, we've never claimed perfection. However, I thought that this scripture was really fitting with our topic today about who's the, who's the chief in here because there's no greater um, man, in my opinion, as far as uh, who wrote in the New Testament than the Apostle Paul. Yeah. Um, he wrote most of the New Testament, and his letters were powerful. He's talking to a young man here, Timothy, and he's letting him know, listen, I'm telling you this because I have failed. I haven't made 100 on yeah. every every test. I've, I've failed numerous times. And so I thought, why? what is the attraction, number one, for someone to think that they're fooling everybody by being perfect, and also, what is the attraction for someone who does fail or make a mistake to get out of the race so easy? Mm-hmm. You, you follow me? Yeah, yeah. I talked a little bit about that in Sunday school the last time I taught since you weren't there. That's, um, that's numerous times. <laughs> My attendance record is really well, bad. Well, you know, sometimes you go preach other places, funerals and vacations, so they get stacked up. But yeah. You know, for some people, and I'm one of these people, uh, I'm still beating myself up about a mistake long after God has totally forgotten about it. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that 
that drags you into a hole. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, take take for instance the cross slide episodes. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I heard not one negative thing in regards to those episodes. Everybody who's talked to me about them, this is what they've said, Brother Andrew. You have no idea how much those testimonies yeah. helped me. But here's what they didn't hear. Before we recorded, mm-hmm. I almost had to coach each and every one of them because they were embarrassed about things that they had done. And even sure. some of those said, hey, if you don't mind, I don't want to go here. I don't want to go there. Why is that? It's because even how incredible their testimony is, they're still ashamed of what they did. Yes. And I know what you're saying. God's long forgiven you. It's yep. It's been washed under the blood. But we haven't forgiven ourselves. But you haven't forgiven yourself. Because we didn't forget about it. You're exactly right. So the Apostle Paul, he actually, in another place in Philippians, talked about this. So in 1 Timothy, he's talking to a young man there and letting him know, look, your ministry is just now starting. Take it from a failure. I've messed up a bunch. I was a sinner. I was the worst of the worst. I, I messed up a bunch. However... People can interpret that, well, that was when Paul was not saved, so he didn't make a mistake then. Well, go read Philippians. Go read Go, go read Philippians chapter 3 when he says this, Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which I also am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I'm not telling you this because I'm perfect and I've attained perfection. Mm-mm. I'm telling you this because even after I got saved, even after salvation, people look at my testimony and, like you said, and I'm, I'm humbled. I promise you, there's nothing in me that goes, yeah, yeah. I huffed Rion, you know, the, I mean, good Lord, what are you going to be proud of? You know? Yeah. I did a bunch of terrible stuff, but I look at my testimony and, and I say this as embarrassing as it, as it is. And there was years that I never would have shared what I shared on, on the air the other day. However, I knew if I open up, it's going to help somebody. And I love that the apostle Paul was willing to do that. After I got saved, I'm telling you this, there was still much work to do. There's still places in my life that I've got to have God's help. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. As we've said so many times, we are all human. Mm -hmm. Uh, Just like what you said earlier, sometimes our um, transparency is not always appreciated, Mm -hmm. but we are human. Mm -hmm. That is no excuse to sin, Mm -hmm. period, period. But there's nothing wrong with looking in the mirror and saying, I'm human. Yeah. When when I make a mistake, just like what I taught in Sunday school, don't be a slave to circumstance. Be proactive instead of reactive. Mm-hmm. When you re- we've all had circumstances when you said, "Man, I wish I'd have handled that better." Well, next time that same circumstance comes along, there's your opportunity. There's your opportunity. Yep. Don't make the same mistake twice. You're right. You're right. Don't get back in the same ditch. Yes. Um one thing that you learn, especially when you go, you know, learn about the Cherokee Indians or whatever, mm-hmm. they were so loyal to one another. Yes. They had one another's back. They all had duties and jobs to do, mm-hmm. but they were a loyal bunch. And efficient. <clears throat> yeah. And a matter of fact, I learned this from um, uh, the other day. I learned this from somebody I can't remember. If you are Cherokee, no matter how far More the percentage. bloodline goes, it yeah. doesn't matter the percentage, you're always Cherokee. Mm. So the loyalty, it's like a, 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 it's something prideful to them. You know, sure. they're, they're very proud of their, their heritage. And yeah. matter of fact, there's a school up there in Cherokee, North Carolina, that uh, Cherokee Indians can take their children to, and each teacher speaks to them fluently in Cherokee the whole day. Wow. And so then they have programs to help their their families learn Cherokee, so they don't want their their culture to die. Yes. And so what I thought about that, uh, talking, you know, going back into from this this trip I was on, I thought about the church being a tribe, you know, and we did a episode on a tribal church, you mm-hmm. know, uh, a tribal church or tribalism, I think is mm-hmm. what we named it. Um, and it's not good when it's you know I'm us against them exactly. 
But you can learn something, even on a spiritual aspect, the church can learn something from the Cherokee Indians. And I thought to myself, you know what? I need to be like that in my church. Mm -hmm. I need to be one that restores those that make mistakes, those that fall. And I know that better now than I ever have in my life. Sure. uh, From all the mistakes that I've made, you know, if you're not careful, you will get this mentality because it wasn't you. Let me tell you something. If it wasn't you, it's going to be you. Or it has been you. Or you're going to die. And, and <laughs> you know, and then you, and then you won't make another mistake. Yeah. You know. Um, however, I thought if the church is the tribe that God has planted us to be, then when those that make a mistake they should look at the church as the only place that's going to give them grace and give that's them right. mercy. Yep. They should look at the church, the church leaders, yep. the church, uh, uh, you know, the the staff, whatever you want to call it, the ministers there, the the lay members from top to bottom. They should look at it and go, "Hey, I've messed up." Or I, you know, Brother Jonathan Prickett did a great, mm-hmm. great uh, talk about that. Great episode on that. You know, what's a stumble? What's a mistake? What's a sin? Call it whatever you want. When you fall, the church should be the first place they go, hey, I know they'll forgive me. I know they're going to help restore That's me. That's my refuge. But it's the total opposite. It is. It's the total opposite. You go, if they find out, I'm toast. Yeah. Why is that? Good question. Um, I think as human beings, we all love to hear bad news. If I tell you that a house is on fire, you're going to go ride. If you see smoke, you're going to go look for the fire. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. you can use that as a spiritual influence. You know, if the church right. is burning for Jesus, people are going to come by. But <laughs> vice versa. Have, but if your house is burned down, people are going to ride by the just, to watch come, it, yeah. just to watch it burn. You've got that right. Um, as Christians, in quotations, um, we should be careful. When you hear bad news about someone in your tribe, first of all, keep it locked up tight. Don't spread it. Mm-hmm. And pray for them. Don't, don't go get your ax so you can cut them down. And I've learned this through experience. Chances are by the time you hear about it and talk to them, if you have any ounce of confidence in them, they've already made it right. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But people will hear something from years down the road and and say, oh, I knew it. Well, man... That was five years ago, you know. Yeah. It was five weeks ago. It was seven months ago. It doesn't matter the time frame. Yeah. Because even the Apostle Paul, go back to him. Hey, guys, there was none worse than you around here than me. Yeah. Because I want to look at people with that mentality, Ryan. I want to look at people the way that Jesus did. I, and, and, you know, I've been so guilty of... Man, I knew they weren't right or I whatever. Know, that mentality is such it's it, toxic. It is. A good word. It, you know, That's exactly it's toxic. What it is. You know, oh, they were never right. Or blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Look at the pattern of them. Look at their life. What have they done? Mm-hmm. You know? And then you can go, Oh, I know what it is. They're human. Yeah. You know? But I don't want uh, you know, the Bible talks about in Proverbs that the wicked lie in wait for the righteous to stumble. Mm-hmm. The righteous should not wait for the other righteous to no. fall. If they are, they're not too righteous. Exactly. The Bible depicts it. So, you know, with our transparency, um, I, I, I said this in my notes while we were preparing for this podcast. I said, in real time, right now, while you and I are sitting here, God is working on me and you. Absolutely. Right now, yeah. God is showing things in my life and in your life, mm-hmm. um, things that we have to work on. To me, that is what I love about um, these conversations that you and I are having. It's almost like, hey, we're just letting people in, into our, our our brains a little bit to say, hey, those guys are having the same conversations that I'm having with mm-hmm. one of my church friends mm-hmm. or whatever. We're in the same struggle. We're in the same fight. And it doesn't life. matter. It, it is life. But it doesn't matter um, how spiritual you get. It doesn't matter how... how uh, well known you become, the struggle is life. Yeah. And you're gonna have to keep fighting. You know, everybody's made mistakes. Everybody has 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 failed because they're sure. trying. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the people that you think they haven't, it's just because 
you don't know about it. Exactly. And if you think you've got it together, it's just because people don't know. You're exactly right. There was a man that, that came to the office the other day, and he was talking to me. And I, uh, I, I said this to him, and I thought, man, I'm, I really want to remember that. But talking about being perfect and never make a mistake, and disclaimer, this is not, hey, Andrew and Ryan said, look, I'm going to be 30-something years old, and I can still <laughs> sin. The, no. That's not what we said. No. But what we're saying is so true yeah. that you're never going to be perfect. What what would grace be? What would mercy be if, if Jesus is if like, you ah, perfect, you wouldn't need they it. didn't make a mistake, so they don't need me. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, more times in my life here recently, it's like I had an epiphany. I, I look up and I go, I've got to have his grace. I've got to have his mercy. Yes. I've got to have. I've got to have him. So I was talking to this guy in my office, and I didn't want to forget this. I look at him, and I have utmost confidence in this man. And he and I were talking about the Lord, and I, I don't know how we got on the subject, but I was just talking to him, and, and he was talking to me. And I looked at him, and I said, Brother, I want you to know something. I have utmost confidence in you. And he said, well, I appreciate that. And I said, but I want I want to tell you something because man, I'm telling you, it got rich in that office. We were we were really feeling it. He, if, he, if he's listening, he knows who I'm talking about. But I looked at him. I said, I have utmost confidence in you. I think you're a righteous and a great man. He was humbled. He said, I appreciate that. And this is what I told him. I said, you want to know why I think that? Why is it, brother Andrew? It's not because I haven't seen you make a mistake yet. It's because this. I have enough confidence in you to know if you do or when you do make a mistake, you'll make it right. Biblically, a perfect man or a righteous man, righteous woman, is not one without fault or failure. If a righteous man falls seven times, what does he do? He's going to get up seven times. Exactly. So the Bible just told us a righteous man will fall. Yep. Are you going to argue with that? (laughs) I'm not. But what he does that's different than the unrighteous or the quitter. He gets back up. Gets back up. Yep. And so I look at people, Brother Fred Smith, his sons are near and dear to us. You're reading my mind. Really? Yeah. <laughs> well, he even, Jonathan told me, he's like, look, my dad wasn't always the, the yes. Fred you knew. Yes. Why? Ex- does that not further our point here? Yes. That he was just relentless in his pursuit to be the man that God called him to be. Amen. I talked about that in Sunday school too. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I stole your notes, it sounds yeah. like. A perfect man, according to the Bible, is not one that is without mistakes or failure. A perfect biblical man is one who refuses to give up and accepts the lessons that God mm-hmm. sends his way. Job... When God sent you that, he was perfect. But if you read on, whenever he's going through the time of his life, he starts questioning God in in a pretty bold way. Mm -hmm. God stops and he goes, where were you when the worlds were formed? And Job humbled himself. He goes, "I I spoke out of turn, Lord. Even Job, the perfect man, had to be corrected by God. I heard something that is really, it just came to my mind, so I want to share this, okay? There was a preacher that I heard say this, um, he, he's not in our movement, and mm-hmm. he's a phenomenal man. I have listened to more sermons online from him that have helped me. But he said something that really sticks out to me, especially when we've talked about what we've talked about today. He said this, Ryan, when his kids were young, they went to the the Sunday school, children's church or whatever, and he went to go get his daughter after the service was over from the nursery. And she was a little girl, and she had gotten in trouble. So the person that was over the nursery that day, the parents that were watching them, told the pastor, hey, just want to let you know we had to uh, get on to her. She was acting bad, blah, blah, blah. But this other kid was too, you know, kind of gave him the details. Mm -hmm. And he told his daughter, when you get home, you're going to be in trouble. And this is what she said. She she got so upset, and she said, Daddy, she said, I don't understand it. When I get in trouble, you always discipline me, but they were doing it too. 
and and you never get on to them. And this is what he told her. He said, honey, they're not my children. Exactly. He said, I'm your father. Mm -hmm. And this is what he said to his congregation, talking about how God chastens those that he loves. He said, chances are, if God has not spoke to you and corrected you in a little while, chances are you're not one of his children. And Ryan, that has resonated with me. I want, yes, I was chief of sinners, but the only reason why I'm sitting in this chair today is because I've learned how to take correction from God. Yes. And it's yes. not fun at times. No. It's hard. No. But they'll, he'll never come to you in a spirit of condemnation. He'll always come with a spirit of conviction, and he'll always offer a way of correction every single day. Time. Every single time. Yes. No matter what. No matter what. We sure do appreciate everybody coming and uh, listening and joining in on uh, another great episode of the Pentacast podcast. Oh, yeah. Just the boys here today. But uh, we'll try to line up some good old guests to join us here in the near future. Yeah. We do love y'all. We hope y'all have a great week. Over and under. Thank you.